To start a new project in Top Solid, go to the Home tab, select your Projects Explorer. In the Projects Explorer, you'll see a list of folders that are used for organizing all the work that you do in Top Solid. In this case, I'm going to go to my Marketing folder, Post IMTS folder. I'm going to right click there and choose New Project. I'm going to start with my standard Top Solid USA template and I'm going to call this Retainer Fixture. That's going to be the name of my project. Once the project has been created, you'll see it within that folder. And to open it, you simply double left mouse button click. Now, on the right side of your screen, you're going to see your project. To begin with, we're going to import the files necessary to get working on this retainer fixture. There are a couple of ways to import data into Top Solid. I can right mouse button click on the folder for which I want to import into, go down to Import Export and choose either Import a File with Conversion, Import File Without Conversion, or Import Several Files with or Without Conversion. Okay, I'm going to choose Import File Without Conversion, and I'm going to come here and just select both of these files, and I control selected them. One is the DWG and the PDF that the client sent me. Now that those files are imported into my project, how do you work with them? To begin with, I can double click to open up the PDF of the drawing. So this was the drawing that was supplied by our customer. I'll minimize that for now. Next, I want to take my DXF for DWG file, right mouse button click on it, and choose Convert Document. When I do that, I can look page by page if I want to see what's what. This is page two, page one. How do I want to import these? Well, I want them all to be imported as a part file. So I'm going to update all of that. If I go to my templates, I can even choose a part document template. For example, I know this is going to be made out of aluminum, 6061 aluminum. And then from there, I'll just click OK. Top Solid now imports all of those various drawings into our environment. Now, next I'm going to move all of those imported part files into my parts folder. Okay, so let's begin by checking out where the zero is on this drawing. So in my entities tree here on the left hand side, I'm going to turn on all of my frames and I can see that my zero is located right down here at the bottom left corner of the drawing. What I'd like to do to make sketching a little bit simpler is I want to move my zero of my top view here down to there. It's real easy to do. We go to the construction tab, we go to transformations and start a new transformation. We select this drawing and then we say we want to do a translation and I'm going to do between two points. We zoom way up here, we'll grab that point and then we'll snap to the absolute origin point. Put the green check. It's going to preview the move and green check. Perfect. I'll turn off my frame there and I'm going to turn off a few other things. I'm going to go expand my layers and I'm going to say, you know what, I don't want to see the border, any of the detail information, the dimensions, none of the hidden lines, none of the notes. I just want to see my view. Perfect. Let's now start by going to our 2D sketch, starting a new sketch. Now here, the software is asking me where I want to put it. It's asking me if I want to put it on the same plane that my sketch one is on. I don't really care about that so much. I'm going to put it just not directly on my XY plane. And now from here, we're going to go to rectangle. I'm going to switch to parallel to axes. I'm going to pick this top left corner, bottom right corner. Now, my dimensions came up driven because I'm snapping to geometry, which is fine. But you can see that here, the dimension is 8 inches by 4 inches. If I bring my dimensions back, these are ornate dimensions from a zero. You can see 4 inches to the left, 4 inches to the right. That equals 8 in my book. And 2 and 2, that equals 4 in my book. So those look correct. If I look at this front view here, we see we, can, uh, we need to extrude this for an inch and three eighths. Also perfect, so I'm gonna turn off my dimensions and let's go ahead and extrude. So here again, I can grab onto my grip, set whatever I want. In this case, I want it to be exactly one inch 375. Next, I'd like to add this chamfer that's up here. If you look down at this front view again, there's a clear chamfer there. Let's go add our dimensions back, and I can see it's a 2 inch by 20 degree chamfer. So I can turn off my dimensions now that we know it's 2 by 20. We'll go up to the shape tab here, 
choose the chamfer command. I'm going to switch to distance and angle. I'm going to set this to 2 inches and 20 degrees. And then we'll select our edge. If the angle is calculated the wrong way, double click on the arrow and it goes the other way. Let's go grab this side as well. Okay, moving right along here, we're going to start by making the main center pocket. That's right here. Okay. To do that, I'm going to start by building a sketch on this top face. And here I'm just going to select the face, right mouse button, click, and choose sketch. And you're going to see me use icons and right, right mouse button tools uh, quite often in Top Solid. Again, remember Top Solid is a uh, Windows certified application. Now, from here, there's lots of different ways to go, but I'm going to use the simplest I can think of, which is something called Contour. Okay. And just to help so that we can see things a little better, I'm going to maximize my screen there. With Contour Wizard, I'm just going to select a segment to start on, and now it's going to start wanting to let me trace. I'm going to go this way, this way, and I'm just picking on the arrow that makes sense for the direction that I'm trying to get my final sketch. With. This way it's checking, it's filling any gaps, it's doing all the heavy lifting for me, because frankly I just don't want to. Now our sketch is complete, and from here we can go ahead and create a pocket. Now, as far as the pocket is concerned, we need to know how deep to make the pocket, right? Well, we probably would help out if we could go look at this drawing over here. So, something neat about our software, all the preview images are live images. So I can middle click while I'm in the middle of a command here. I can resize this even, and I can come up and zoom up and get the dimensions I need from this other page that we imported, right? So this is the altitude we're going to. So it's five eighths, but the zero's from the bottom. We're starting from the top. So we're gonna have to do some math here. Okay, no problem. Let's go to 1.375 minus 0.625. I'll hit tab. There's my value. Boom, pocket done. Okay, from here, we're gonna build these little corner bosses. And again, we're gonna do this using contour wizard. So let's just get right to it. We're gonna build a sketch. And I'm going to come up here to my sketch icon bar and go to Contour Wizard. And I'm going to select the segment I want to start on. Maybe I'm starting that way. Going this way, then to there. Perfect. I'm going to zoom out and we'll go to Boss now. When I go to Boss, you'll notice we have a Boss height here. And again, I still have my preview up, as you can see. And this is the height we need to go from. So 875 to 5 eighths. Okay, we know it's a quarter of an inch. So let's just go here. A quarter of an inch. Perfect. I'm going to turn off my bottom sketch for a second here, and then I'm going to take this feature and make a repetition out of it. Even. We'll go and make a new pattern. It will be a symmetric pattern. I'm going to use a double mirror in this case, two symmetry planes about X, Z, and Y, Z. And like that, we now have all four bosses. If we go and turn our views back on, you can see those bosses match up perfect. Right, from here, we're going to go ahead and make the long pocket that's on either side of our part here. So to do that, let's create a sketch up on this top face. And in this case, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Again, I've shown you Contour Wizard. I'm showing you uh, as many tools as I can, in fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some kind of random rectangle. Okay, now I have an automatic dimensioning tool turned on. So it's adding these dimensions automatically, and I don't want them. In fact, what I want to do is I just want to take this, make it coincident there. I want to take this and make it coincident here, this edge coincident here. And you notice that I'm doing this just by simple drag and drop. It doesn't get easier than that. Now, from here, we do want to know what this fillet is, right? So let's uh, let's see what we can do magically here. So first, I'm going to go to pocket. So we're cutting a pocket, which is perfect. And we need to, of course, know the depth of our pocket. And our depth of our pocket is right here. It's three quarters from one and three eighths. So let's go 1.375 minus three quarters. Okay, that looks great. And now we want to add some fillets. Now, my vertical radius is here. I'm going to say I don't know what it is. Okay, if we look at this straight on from the top, and we zoom up, you could just try values until you get one that looks close, right? That's just a lot of guessing. And you know, I guess because I've done this part before, but let's say we don't know what the value is supposed to be. Well, I can go here and go to measured value. And I can just select that right there. Now it gives it to me as a diameter. So we'll have to go here and hit divide two. Again, just let top solid do the math for you. 
click OK. We're done there. Now we want to go ahead and add the fillets that belong right here as well. And let's show you another way to do things. I can go here to analyze, analyze this way, get a size, and I can select that. And here you can see the radius is 330 seconds. Because I have my resulting box up here, I can actually take this and hit Control C or right click copy, whatever makes you happy. And now let's go to shape, fillet, paste, and now select the edges to apply those corner breaks to. Perfect. Okay, next what we're gonna work on is the open pockets on this side and this side. So to do that, I'm gonna minimize this a little bit because we don't need to see that so much anymore right now. We'll come back to it here in a sec. And let's just go build a sketch on this face. Here, I'm gonna use Contour Wizard because I think it makes the most sense. And I'll start by selecting this way. Sure, we'll go up that way. We'll come over to here, down to there, and over and done. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a pocket. When I create my pocket, you can see it is creating everything that needs to be there. I don't want these fillets turned on, okay? And again, if I go look at my preview here, that is a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, perfect, done. Now, I'm gonna guess this is the same pocket on both sides, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a repetition. And here I'm gonna use a symmetric pattern, but this time instead of a double plane, it's gonna be a simple plane, and it will be our XZ plane. Preview looks good, we'll click OK. Again, if we look at this straight on, that looks like it matches perfectly, wonderful. Okay, from here we have a lot of drillings to put in this part, so let's not waste any time. I'm gonna start with the ones that need to go up on this face here. Okay, so let's right click there and we'll make a sketch right up there. Now, what I'm gonna use here is kind of a little magic trick. It's called a, uh, a drilling group. And all I'm doing is creating some points at the center of these circles. Perfect. From there, if I right click in space, I can go to drilling group. I can go to my shape tab and I can come over here to drillings and go to drilling group whatever makes you happy. Now, to begin with, we want to know what these drillings are, right? So let's go turn on our notes and let's kind of zoom up down here and looks like a quarter 20 half inch deep tapped hole. Perfect. So let's switch to tappings. We'll rotate so you can see what's happening here. And now I'm going to switch my standard to be a quarter 20. I'm going to make sure that my tapping is set to a half inch deep and my hole is set to blind and I'll let it automatically calculate the depth. That looks perfect for me. I'll click OK. And now finally, I want to repeat that over to this side. So I can use the right click menu like I've been doing to get the repetition or to show you a different way. I'm on the shape tab. I can come here to repetition. I can select the feature and then check this out. I want to borrow the same pattern that I use. Let me turn off this so you can see more easily that I used over here. So I click in pattern and I just mouse over this feature because I know that I had a pattern for that. I can borrow it, and like that, I'm done. Okay, so we still have a lot of drillings to do here, so let's not waste any time. I'm gonna bring back my imported sketch view. I'm gonna go to the bottom of this pocket, create a sketch there, and now I wanna copy all of these circles. Here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to Copy Edge, and here I'm just gonna drag a window around what I want. Now in Top Solid, you have a very powerful selection window. This selection window, as you can see, is solid. But if I go right to left, it's dashed. Dashed will select anything that crosses the window, whereas solid window will select anything that's inside the window only. Okay? So you have lots of different ways to select geometries. Like that, everything is selected. Boom, done. I'm going to go to my drilling group again. Um, I'll do it again from the shape tab. Why not? We'll go to drilling group. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do I have an error here. I need to activate circles. Perfect. Now that I have circles active, I'm going to just go to standard drilling. And here, okay, it's already at an eighth inch, but let's say it wasn't. I'm going to come here and go grab a measured value of any of these circles. And you can see it passes that value along. I'm going to say it's a through hole and go. And like that, we've now passed all of those circles, and let's turn off the sketches to make our drillings. Okay, moving right along, 
turn back on our view, see what we have to look at here. Um, I got some drillings that I have to make because I kind of wear holes on tops of these pockets. So again, I'm going to use the same methodology. I'm going to create a sketch and just put some center points on each of these. We could do one and pattern them. I'm just going to do all four because why not? I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer here. Now, I need to go make, a, again, a drilling group. And this time, it's going to be a counterboard hole. Now, I don't remember what size that is, so let's go look. So the counterboard should be 437 and a half by, it looks like uh, 312 and a half. So let's go look. So if I go here and say 437, that looks right. And if I set my depth here to 0.2125, that looks right. For my drill diameter here, it looks like whoever made this forgot to annotate, but thankfully there's a value there. So we can just go here and go to measure and select that circle. Perfect. And like that, we're done. Counterboard holes added. Okay, last drillings we have to add in this orientation anyways, are these drillings here. If we look at the note here, it is 12 of them. They're UNF, so they're fine thread, 836 by 316 feet. So let's get started. Again, I'm going to make a simple sketch and I will create this like so. And maybe we'll pattern these to the other side just to be different. Okay, so perfect. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and let's go ahead and do a drilling group. We're gonna to switch to tapped holes. Uh, in this case, we want inch fine. This way I can go find my UNF, uh, 836, perfect. And for my depth, I want these to be 0.187. And for the hole, let's set that to blind as well. That looks perfect. And I'm done. I'll turn off my notes and my lines for the moment. And then let's go ahead and make another repetition. This will be again a symmetric repetition. This time it will be about YZ. Perfect. Looks good. If I turn my view back on and we look straight at it, looks like we're in the right location. Okay, in this next step, we have to put some features onto this inclined faces on both sides. And to do this, I'd like to get the detailed information for those specific features, which I believe are on page three. So let's go look at page three. Perfect. So here you can see this view has been adjusted. So we're looking straight at it. So this is actually what we want, but I want to simplify what I'm going to use. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of my border, my dimensions. I don't care about the hatching. I don't care about the notes. I don't care about. I want all of that. And I'm just going to build a simple sketch right there. doesn't even matter because all I want to do is I want to copy this information, right? So I'm going to say I would like all of that. Perfect. And all of this. Even better. Okay. And like that, I now have a sketch to copy. Finally, I'm going to make a piece of construction geometry. This is going to be a frame that's going to be at the intersection between this segment and this segment. My X axis is going to be along this edge. And my Y axis is going to be along this edge. Perfect. And if I rotate that, you'll see the orientation of that frame. Now, why did I do that? Well, I'm going to show you a really cool tool here called Entity Copy and Entity Paste. So if I go to my Tools drop down menu here, I have something called Entity Copy. I can grab the entity, referencing that zero. Green check. Now I go back to my original design here. And you know what? I'm going to turn off all of that stuff for now. I need to put a frame in there. So I'm going to say frame again by pointing two directions. So I'm going to say that origin point along this edge that way. That frame orientation looks good. I'll click OK. And now I can go here to Entity Paste, select my destination frame, and perfect. So now I've copied from the one imported DWG drawing file into the one I've been modeling with so that now we can complete this process. Now, I also want to be looking at this one here so we can get some of the sizes directly from the model. So again, we're doing a lot in this step, right? So we're going to look at everything here. This looks like it to be that size counterbore. Perfect. Again, I'm going to do this the same way I've been doing all of these. I'm going to start with a simple little set of sketches because it's easy, right? Anyone can put a point on the screen. I like that. 
let's go to drilling group let's go to counter bore and like I said so 0.8125 the depth of this is 0.437 the through hole is looks like 531 I'm looking right here by the way so let's go here and say 0.531 perfect and done okay to finish up these details we need to add a little slot between these okay so let's not waste any time let's go build a sketch and I think what I'm gonna do here is just build another little rectangle like so I'm gonna get rid of these dimensions for now and I'm just gonna drag and drop that to there drag and drop that to here and then I think I'm gonna make oh how about an alignment we'll align this with the center of that this with the center of that perfect okay and you know what let's just do the same thing down here because it's nice and simple we'll do this get rid of this dimension and I'll show you another way to constrain so I'm gonna copy here I'm gonna cut or pardon me drag and drop there and then this one here I'll take this point and I'll make a coincident on that segment up there and you notice just by grabbing the point moving it and then hovering on what I want up here it's making that coincident relationship for me and then finally we're gonna go ahead and make a pocket we'll flip this over if I look at this uh, drawing here, that's 375 deep. So let's modify this to be 375 deep. Perfect. And finally, looks like we need to put a tap hole in there. So let's build another sketch there. Again, we'll use our friend the sketch pattern because it's just a useful and fast tool. We're gonna say drilling group. We'll go to tapping and let's go look at this note. This is a UNC, so a coarse thread 3816. So Let's change to a coarse thread. And I should mention, you can use our standards or make your own. It doesn't really matter to us. So here we want a 3816. So let's click on a 3816. And again, it's a half inch deep on the tapping. That's fine. And it looks like a through hole. So we'll let this stay as a through hole. Perfect. And then finally, let's go ahead and turn off this copied sketch, right? Perfect. And now let's repeat all of this to this side of the model. So we can go to shape, repetition, and I'm gonna start by selecting that feature, then that feature, then that feature. And I think we might even have, yeah, we do, because we mirrored over here already. So we can reuse that pattern and we're done. Okay, so we have one more hole or set of drillings to put in and there's some goofy counterboard holes at some kind of angle in these four corners here. Now, so far I've showed you how to use uh, the drawing information that you imported, but why not just remember that we have also the drawing from the customer in PDF form? So we can double click on that and we can go have a look. So if we scroll through, this is the item in question. So we have a 437 counter bore by 477 deep and a 281 through hole that's shifted up 3 eighths or one in uh, 5 eighths from the center and one inch 7750 from the center. Okay, so let's start with getting that counterboard hole put in. So I'm just gonna minimize this for the moment. We can always bring it back. And here I'm just gonna go to drilling. Now when I go to drilling, I'm gonna switch to counterbore. And right now you can see how it's wanting to attach it to the nearest edges, which I don't want. I want to attach it based on my zero. And now from my zero, you remember one inch five eighths is good. And let's go back and bring our PDF back. That was one inch 77.50. So let's just go here, 1.7750. Now for our counterboard depth, I'm gonna switch back and forth a few times here, 437 by 477. So 0.437 by 0.477, perfect. And what was it? A 281 through hole, great. Let's go here, 0.281 as the through hole. Now there's one more thing about this hole, right? If we look at this, notice the hole? If that's some angle, right? 25 degree angle. Well, how do you deal with that? Well, thankfully, Top Solid's got your back on that. Let's just add the drilling. That looks really nice. And now if I double click, you're gonna notice that it shows the driving elements. And then I can go here and edit that frame. That's right, it's a frame. So I can go down here to pivot we want to be 25 degrees and let's look at that from the side oh, that looks like it's going the wrong way so let's go minus 25 like so perfect and green check 
And now like that, we've created the exact powder bar hole that we needed. Looks like our depth might be a little bit deep there, but okay, so let's go change that to be maybe 375. Cool, well look at that. I caught a mistake, fixed a mistake, and I'm done. And now finally, I'm gonna repeat this. I'm gonna repeat it using that same double mirror we used at the beginning on these things. And like that, we have now recaptured this design perfectly.